1902, that was a long time ago. In fact, no one that was alive in 1902 is alive today. You can look it up, it's true. And that means there's no one who can tell you they witnessed the last time Texas and Alabama played in Tuscaloosa, but that will change this weekend when the 11th ranked Longhorns make their long awaited return. We are just one day away from Trash Pandas baseball here in Madison. 20 members of last year's first and second half division champs are back with Rocket City and they can't wait to get the season started. We're covering a football school in a basketball tournament in a city that's known for horse racing. Greetings from Louisville, Kentucky, where in about 24 hours, Alabama and San Diego State will meet in the Sweet 16. Ah, the good old days. 2015, what year it was. That's what I looked like back then, and it feels like forever ago. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm showing you pictures from almost a decade ago. Well, because for the first time since 2015, Alabama is ranked outside the top 10. It may be 70 degrees down on the plains, but the freeze is here. Today, Auburn introduced Hugh Freeze as the university's 31st head football coach. The Trash Pandas were just getting used to having hitting machine Nolan Shanowell around when the Angels called him up earlier today. Just 40 days after he was drafted, L.A. called up the 21-year-old who was batting 339 with one home run and 12 runs batted in in 16 games with Rocket City. When Shanowell makes his debut tonight, he'll be the first position player to do so the same season he was drafted since Connor Gillespie did so with the Giants back in 2008. So 40 days to the majors. I couldn't even get abs in 40 days. He's batting first and playing first tonight. Call it a Birmingham bummer. The Auburn Tigers tournament comes to an end at the hands of number one Houston in a game where they led by 10 at the half. If there were any questions remaining, Jalen Milrow answered them on Saturday night, passing for three touchdowns and rushing for two, setting a Bama record as number four Alabama dominates Middle Tennessee 56-7 some traditions just can't be missed. Well, today we almost went without one as the Nathan's hot dog eating contest was temporarily canceled due to stormy weather on Coney Island in New York, but nothing could get in Joey Chestnut's way. The mouth of America rallied the troops and made sure the contest happened and surprise, surprise, he won again. Chestnut scarfed down 62 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes for his eighth straight mustard belt and his 16th overall. Now buckle up for these nutrition facts. 62 hot dogs and buns, that's nearly 19,000 calories 1,200 grams of fat, 65,000 milligrams of sodium, and over 900 grams of protein. Now all this talk about hot dogs <laughs> made me pretty hungry. I don't know any better way than to eat a hot dog. So July 4th, we got some hot dogs. Are we going to have a How contest? Are we ready? <laughs> no. uh, I think we'll just eat them normally, you know? Mm, oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> That's delicious. These are great. Mm. Nobody's like counting calories today, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, maybe you, but no. <laughs> well, none of us are counting calories. one, not 62. It's a little no. different. Down I-65 in the Magic City, it's the Trash Pandas looking to wrap up their series with the Barons and hoping to come away with their sixth win of the week. And the Pandas draw a matchup with Jake Eater, the White Sox fourth-ranked prospect, but he didn't give them much trouble. In the first, Rocket City strikes first when David Calabresi comes home as Tucker Flint hits a chopper to second, and the Barons have to settle for the force play. Now in the third, same score as Sonny D steps in the box, and he hits a gapper. Nolan Shanuel is on his horse, coming all the way around from first to make it 2-0 on Deshera's double, but Birmingham would claw back and take the lead in the fifth, and after a Shanuel single tied the game at three, Tucker Flint drove the first rounder in as he splits the infield and Rocket City leads by one. So now it's on to the bottom of the ninth. Panda's still leading by one as Brian Ramos steps in with a runner on third. Kenyon Yovan just two outs away from his 10th save of the season. But Ramos says vamos, smacking a two-run walk-off shot to end the Panda's road trip with a 5-4 loss. Sticking with the county rival theme, it's another game that didn't get underway until 8. Les Limestone hit the road to take on Ardmore to begin their season. Ardmore off to a shaky start in the home opener, two penalties in the first three plays, and then a turnover. West Limestone's Dawson Mewborn hauls in an interception on a long pass, and the Tiger faithful start to sweat early, and I mean sweat. You know it's hot when they're bringing a fan to the game, and maybe it was the sweaty hands because the Tigers' first play of the second possession is another turnover, and John Winter covers the fumble deep in Tiger territory. Three plays later, the Wildcats captain Easton Smith barrels in from three yards out, giving West Limestone the early lead on this hot and humid night in Ardmore. West Limestone would go on to take this one 16-7 for a perfect start to the year. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. Just ask Ryan Terry. After the first round of the 57th Dykin Spirit of America Golf Classic, he was in 18th place. After the second round, he was tied for 14th, and after the third, he was tied for 8th. And despite starting the fourth and final round one over par, he found a way to win it all. 
Nolan, it'll be a David versus Goliath of sorts with the top overall seed hosting the number 16 national seed. And no matter who wins, somebody's going to be partying for the first time in a long time. Greetings from Winston-Salem, where Wake Forest is hosting their first ever Super Regional with the Demon Deacons and Tide just two wins away from Omaha. Sometimes you find yourself in life's bunker and the only way out is to shoot your shot. That was exactly the case for Michael Sweeney, who holed out from the sand on the 18th of the qualifier, helping him clinch a spot in this week's Hometown Lenders Championship. And now the former Subway sandwich artist is playing on the Corn Ferry Tour for the first time. I'm just happy to be here, happy to uh, get out there and play some golf tomorrow. Mike Sweeney's path to the ledges is unlike any other. A former manure mover and part-time Spotify spitter, the Connecticut native didn't play college golf and for a time called a Walmart parking lot home. I think if you're going to do something, you just got to fully commit to it. Like I moved to Florida to play golf and give this a run. So my, my idea was basically I'm going to do whatever was necessary to put myself in the position, right? So um, whether it be sleeping in my car or working at Subway or whatever it had to be, like that's, that's what I was going to commit to doing. Now he has his biggest chance yet, playing with some of the best in the world for one of the most unique trophies in all of sports. And looking at where his journey started and where things stand now, Sweeney says it's hard to put it into words. Yeah, I mean, luckily I'm not living in my car anymore. Um, but from that point, not having any professional wins, living in my car in a Walmart parking lot to now having this opportunity. And I think it's just a combination of self-belief and the work, right? Like get out there, hit the shots, put in the hours on the range, the putting green, test what you got to test and just believe that you have the capability of doing it, right? The first round of the Hometown Lenders Championship tees off tomorrow at 625 and you can catch Sweeney on the 10th at 837.